Today I want to talk to you about the sources and uses of fund statement during operation in a project finance model. I previously talked to you about the sources and uses of fund statement during construction in a project finance, the importance of it, and how to visualize it, meaning what is the best chart that can represent the summary sources and uses of fund that you can include in your summary sheet or dashboard. Of course, I'm going to put the links down below for you if you want to go and check it out. But today's topic is about the same thing, but doing and replicating the same thing we did for the construction but doing it for the operation phase. But before we get into today's topic, for those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Hedie. I made financial modeling my profession as well as my passion, and my aim here is to make you a pro yourself or simply better at financial modeling. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. All right, so let's go back and just, you know, have a review of the sources and use of funds during construction. Because in a project finance deal or in a project finance structure, you start, you establish an SPV from scratch, from zero. So you have a project company's SPV is the special um, purpose vehicle, right? So you establish that uh, company, project company, which has no history. So it has no balance sheet, zero balance sheet, and you start from scratch. So when you, until you're building your project so that the project become operational and can generate revenues, you don't have any sources of funding other than going to your investors and asking for their money. And this means lending institution or just funds that you can go and, you know, have co-sponsors in your project. So you put all this together, you're going to say, okay, these are my costs. I have to pay my contractor. I have to pay, you know, all for all the SPV cost for the project company cost during operation. I have to get insurance. I have to pay interest during construction. I have to pay the lender's fees. I have to hire consultants and you're going to put list all these costs. And then you're going to say, how am I going to fund this cost? Okay. So we're going to replicate the same thing here, but during operation. So what's going to happen once you hit operation, what you hit the commercial operation date, then going forward, the project hopefully will start generating revenues, right? So what you want to look at, maybe that will be a good piece of information, is to say how you are spending those revenues. So you might already tell me that, hey, dear, we already have the cash flow waterfall and you already explained to us because I already have a blog post and a video about cash flow waterfall, that that's the purpose of including a cash flow waterfall in our project finance model is to have the revenues and then you're going to list in the order of priority how the money that comes into the project revenue accounts, how is it going to be spent in the order of priority? So the sources and uses of funds is a little bit different than cash flow waterfall. It's the base is cash flow waterfall. So you're going to take the cash flow waterfall and you're going to basically reshuffle the items so that you're going to put all the cash inflows at one part and then the cash outflows on the other side. And you're going to see that, okay, these are my revenues. These are my cash inflows. How am I spending the cash inflows, which are, you know, two, and that's basically the sources and uses of funds. Okay. So you might ask me, so why do you think that's important? Why do you think that is important to have this kind of statement in your model? I would say that, you know, in my experience, I usually include that in the models when I'm doing the tariff negotiation, because then when you're negotiating your tariff, that's a good argument, you know, to show, you know, your counterpart that say that, listen, that's the tariff that I need because I have to spend it on OPEX. I have to spend it on debt service. I have to pay, you know, the equity, which they require some return as well. And you list the taxes and all that. So you're going you're gonna to have four to five categories and you're going to break down the tariff into these four to five categories. So that's why I believe that it's in interesting to include a sources and uses of funds during operation in your project finance model. So now I want to take you to a um, simple template that I prepared and I'm going to upload it on my Eloquence channel. You can go and download it just to get the idea of what I mean here about the sources and uses of funds during operation. 
operation. So let's go to Excel and have a look at the sources and user fund. Okay, so let's say that this is a cash, you already have a cash flow waterfall statement included in your project finance model. So it might, it looks like, it looks something like this. You have your revenues and your OPEX and you get the pre-tax cash flow from operation. Then you deduct the taxes and any, you know, release from the working capital account and you get to CFADS cash flow available for that service. Then you pay your interest and you pay your principal and you have also you need to fund your debt service reserve account if it is not pre-funded and you can also i mean you will have to release from that account when the account is no longer needed so the, all that movement comes after you pay your debt service so then whatever remains is going to be distributed as dividend and if there is any need for cash call that also need to be included in your model so that's a very simple cash flow waterfall okay so what i'm going to do in order to convert the cash flow waterfall into an smu it's very simple as i told you just need to reshuffle the items and it's going to look like something like this so i'm going to have my cash inflows on one side and the cash outflows on the other side so my cash inflows are of course the revenues released from all the reserve accounts and the cash outflows and cash calls as well if there is a need for investors to inject money into the project company that also is an inflow so you, you consider it there but you know in the base case of course cash calls should not be triggered then you have on the uh, outflow side you have opex we have taxes and we have that service and the rest is basically equity right so i took the cash flow waterfall statement i separated the cash inflows and outflows so that's step one separating the cash so step one sorry step one is to build the cash flow waterfall in your model step two is to take the cash flow waterfall and reshuffle the cash flow items meaning separate separate the inflows from outflows step three is to basically from the cash outflow come up with four to five categories you know like for example here i have one category opex then taxes then whatever is payment to lenders whether there are fees interest pre-funding of that whatever is the related to the lenders i'm going to include it under that service and whatever is included for equity is going to be equity okay under equity so i have these four components so i can summarize it like this so as you can see in this chart so I have, um, so there are different ways that you can visualize it and show it to your investors or to your managers or to your team. So one piece of information that I think is important or can be interesting for your team is to tell them that, okay, so if you see in terms of percentages, you know, all the from 100% of revenues in the first 14 years when I need to pay my debt, 50% of the cash goes to the lenders. 31% goes to the equity as dividends and the remaining is taxes and OPEX, okay? And after we finish paying the taxes, if we don't refinance, which is the case here, the assumption here, then you know the rest is going to be uh, equity and basically OPEX. The other interesting way to present the same chart is to divide all these line items, OPEX, tax, debt service, and equity, and in your model, it might be different categories. You divide them by your output, okay? So it's going to be like, for example, my, if my project is a power project, so the output of the project is what? Is the megawatt hours, kilowatt hours, gigawatt hours of electricity produced. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take all my revenues and OPEX, tax, debt service and equity, and I'm going to divide it by this annual uh, production. OK, and that's going to give me an indication of the tariff and the breakdown of the tariff. So if I am negotiating the tariff with my counterparts, I will tell them that, listen, the reason why I'm asking you this tariff is because I need to pay the debt. I need to pay my OPEX and the investors are, they also need to be remunerated. And as you can see here during the, the first 14 years, 15 years of the project, the um, shareholders, they don't get much. I mean, they, they only get 30%. The main, you know, uh, party that receives the cash is going to be the lenders. They get 15% of the cash. And then after, you know, we are done with the lenders, then 
the equity can basically recover its capital invested during construction. So as you can see, that might be an interesting piece of information. If you want to include it in your models, in your project finance models, that might be interesting. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So um, I'm sure that you can do much more than what I did here with the information I gave you today. So I'm interested to see if you can find application for the sources and user funds during operation in your own transactions. And of course, let me know. And if you have any questions, also let me know. And that's it for today. For next time, let me know if you have any suggestions for the topic for next time. I'm running a little bit um, out of ideas, but I'm thinking about some things, but they are challenging and I, uh, I'm a bit lazy to challenge myself, but I will see how I can do it. So as I said, I'm going to put this simple workbook in, on my Eloquence channel for you to download and get inspired to do the same maybe in your project finance model if that you think that that's something that can be useful. And uh, I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you and bye. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com.